Hello, welcome everyone to the 6570 Family Project Podcast. You guys, we're on episode 10 already. How amazing is that? I can't believe it's going by super fast. I, I don't know. The world seems to be going by super fast today. And speaking of which, today's topic uh, just came to me and it's been really heavy on my heart because we have so much happening in the world right now, right? So how am I supposed to help my kiddo, my, my child. I have four daughters who are all teens and tweens, middle school, high school. How am I supposed to help them become citizens of the world, right? To understand what's happening in the world without scaring the pants off of them, right? I mean, listen to this list right here. It's insane. Within the last month, you guys, so four weeks, you know what? Uh, I'm going to take it back because I have one more thing I can add to it that I know of off the top of my head. Just the span since this podcast has started. So the last 10 weeks, we have had hurricanes, flooding, terrorists, public killings, persecution of faith, refugees with homes taken away from them, refugees being uh, being hurt on national television, immigrants, ethnicity problems, trafficking issues, um, women's rights here and overseas, our own government split down the aisle. We have COVID, of course, we have fires, we have famine, we have oceans changing their currents and unknown futures for our climates. We have global warming, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You guys, that's just since this podcast started 10 weeks ago. So if we wake up in the morning in our 24 hour a day news world that we have, and we're like, Hey, uh, you know, Hey kids, how are you doing this morning? So here is every, all the different ways that the world is terrible, scary, and is probably going to end today. Right. It's not going to fly. It's not going to add to uh, their success, their well-being, their mental strength, their resilience, and their future for sure, right? So, but if we also avoid everything and don't talk to them about world issues, that has its own uh, set of problems. We talked a little bit last week about this bubble that they can be in, right? The bubble of a non-existent world, a fake world within the real world. And then one day they're thrust out into it. Maybe one day they do turn on CNN or Fox News or whatever, or the BBC, all these things. And they turn it on and they're like, what do you mean this is happening? I thought everything was hunky dory with the world. And you're like, well, there's, you know, there's some things that are always going on, you know? And so there's this balance that we need to strike within ourselves and each child is going to be different and you are you and your partner or spouse are going to be different so what can we do here so number 1 we can retreat and avoid right we already talked about how that's probably not the best way you're going to go uh although i have said it before i'm going to go live on a mountaintop and you know <laughs> drink uh, spring water and grow my own food right sometimes that sounds really really amazing um, but probably not realistic, especially for long-term, uh, life. So we can retreat and avoid, we can dive in and drown, right? We don't want to do that. You're going to, like I said, come downstairs and while you're over waffles, telling them about 12 ways that the world almost ended last night. And these people are being hurt over and over again and tortured. No, we're not going to do that. That's awful. Um, so what can we do then? Those are obviously the two extremes to the spectrum. And we want to land somewhere in the middle, uh, somewhere in the gray area there. And so we want to skim the surface, uh, see what we're called to do, what interests us and what we can do to help, right? Ding, ding, ding. Like that's the answer right there. Again, we're just going to skim the surface as a parent. Um, we're because we know our kids so well, because we're guiding them in this 65, 70, 18 years, 6,570 days. Um, we are guiding them through this parenthood, childhood, 65, 70 zone. We are their uh, architects. We are building planning and uh, I'm sorry, designing planning and overseeing the construction of them. We know them inside and out. So we know better what they can handle, what maybe their interests are and where that lies. Get them a local paper. We don't need a national paper, especially 
when they're in elementary and middle school, um, just a local paper, our local paper. I love it has people we know in it. We've been in it several times and it's just what's happening around town. Right. So that is always a fun one to have, and they can start to, you know, dip their toes into things. And then you can talk about some national things, some international things as well, again, because you know, your kids so well, then, and if you don't let me know, that's what I love to do. I love to help parents know their kids so we can guide them and we can unlock their inner leaders. We can, we can move them forward. So they have an incredible foundation to launch their uh, lives with, um, by the end of the 6570 contact me, let's powwow about that. I can't wait. But as far as it goes here, how can be, how can we be, um, how can we live in this world? How can we be citizens of this world, but we not have the overwhelm? That's what we want to do. We're skimming the surface. We're seeing what we're called to, what interests us and what we can maybe even do about it. So what this comes down to, it's two words, friends. It is two words, critical thinking, critical thinking. I talked about this, I believe in episode two, maybe critical thinking. It is a dying, uh, art, a dying sport, if you will, but it can't die. It absolutely can't. Critical thinking is vital. And, uh, so we're going to explore the facts. We're going to cross check. We're going to explore how, uh, to impact this cause, right? We might be able to make a donation, right? That's the most, um, uh, distanced way that we could do it. Uh, we can talk to somebody. We can actually sit down and have a conversation with somebody that's been affected by this more closely than we, uh, we have, we can rally, we can vote, we could take a trip. We can do, um, uh, volunteer work and servant work. We can get into it on whatever level it is that we are called and pulled to. So, we also have to understand for ourselves, for sure, and also in teaching our kids. I mean, this even happens in school with the school drama happening. And let me tell you, there's always school drama. And if it's even if they're homeschooled, three of my kids are homeschooled, there is sk still school drama and they don't even go to the school, but there's still school drama. What I'm not even talking about within our school, although there's, you know, that too. So, and so you took my pencil, give me back. Uh, can you get my science book? No, all those things, you know, but I am talking about the local schools, even though my kids don't go to them, they still know all about it and what's going on and have even been involved in it. Sometimes there's camp, there's uh, church youth, there is friends, all of these things. So what happens on a small scale happens on a big scale too, right? So understanding that word of mouth is like the telephone game, right? We've all, we've all seen it. We've played the telephone game before. Um, I love uh, Ellen's game of games. She has an actual game of this telephone game and they all have these huge, um, ginormous earmuffs on and they start talking and they go one by one down the line. And then uh, by the end, I mean, they're lucky if the end person, I think it goes through four people, maybe, maybe five. Um, but they're lucky if that end person knows a single word that they said in the beginning, a single word. Right. And, uh, so she makes a game out of it and it's funny, but also in truth, when you have a line of people and you tell them one thing and they tell them one thing, everyone puts their own perspective on it. Everyone puts their own spin on it. So by the time it gets to the end, it is not what the truth originally was at all. So we have to take what we're hearing also with a grain of salt, because it's coming through so many different people's perspectives. Um, and what we see is not always what is true, right? Um, I remember did anyone else ever used to watch and binge watch John and Kate plus eight, like back in the day, um, as TLC, maybe, um, I think that's where they were, but anyway, um, I watched them back when they were the happy, you know, I say with air quotes, happy go lucky family. And they had the eight kids. Um, and, uh, yeah, they had the eight kids. It was the six babies and the two older ones, I believe. My point being later on when everything started to fall apart and I, I am, I have no idea what happened in that house. I wasn't, I didn't live in that house, obviously. So no judgment against John and Kate and what happened there. I don't know. It looks tragic on all levels, um, which isn't very unfortunate, but 
when they were doing a, um, interview on the today show, I believe it was one of the girls wanted a drink of water and all that was shown uh, about Kate uh, was this terrible face that she was making, like uh, telling her kid, no, you can't have water. And it was spread like wildfire. And it, Kate is such an evil person, an evil mom and all this, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wow, that's terrible. And I looked into the backstory and it turned out, you know, uh, she, um, had a drink of water and then the cameras were about to roll. So she was putting it away. And one of the girls was like, I need one, but the cameras were about to roll. She said, no. And you know, it goes on. We've all had those moments. Right. And it made me, it was so eye opening to me because I, because I was like, um, there are some still shots in my life more than I'd probably like to admit that if someone just took a still shot of me right then and then propagated it around, I would look like a monster. And don't tell me that there isn't some of you because I know there is, right? If someone just takes a still shot, it could be the most beautiful person in the world, right? Most beautiful person in the world. And you get a still shot of them looking at you weird. They are not going to look like the most beautiful person in the world, right? So my point is with all of the news and everything that we're getting, even what we see sometimes isn't exactly true, isn't what is actually happening. And having them understand that from a simple perspective of, oh, I heard uh, Johnny pushed uh, Sophie on the playground. And so everyone is against Johnny now. And we all know that he's tr a terrible, mean person. Uh, well, is that what really happened? Like, okay, so he might've pushed her and we need to dig into this story a little bit more. We need to have some critical thinking. So what is critical thinking? It is the objective analysis and evaluation of an issue in order to form a judgment. Okay. Any of you, I have an incredible judgment, um, piece, how to teach your kids, how to use good judgment without being judgmental. You can find it in the, uh, family success vault, and you are going to want to definitely get your hands on that because this is so rampant in high schools, middle schools, elementary schools, even younger. I've heard these things, but especially when we get into middle and high school, some of those judgments that people are passing on that were made falsely or made without full context, they can stay with you until far after graduation. And that isn't something that anyone should have to carry around. So it's about studying and not assuming, right? It's about research and discussions. It's not about only speaking at something, right? There's give and there's take, there's listening and discussions happening. It's about being curious and open to hearing other people's perspectives and not closed off to other people and what their experiences are. I'll tell you what, on Saturday nights, every single Saturday night, um, I go with uh, my husband and I go with a group of couples and we sit down, we rotate houses and we literally have discussion sessions about you name it, you name it. We've talked about it. Uh, many things I never even would have thought I would have talked about in the past, um, just about world operations and trade and, uh, world wars and what's happening now, what happened then, um, even down to, uh, education system, all these things. We have these very in-depth discussions on Saturday nights and I love it. I look forward to it every single week. And many of us disagree on many things and it can even get heated sometimes, but we are all very appreciative of everyone's uh, perspectives. We are all very respectful of one another's perspectives. And at the end of the night, we're all hugging each other goodbye and saying, see you next Saturday. But that is a practice that I love and adore. And we can get our kids and just involved in this critical thinking. Like, let's really think through this, not make assumptions, not see, see something and assume that it is the absolute truth. Even if it's a picture, sometimes even many times, even if, if, if it is a video, we need to get context about what is happening. So the world's problems are not going away, right? And it's our job as family architects 
to raise these self-led leaders that are capable of tackling the problems that we face from a global, from a national, from a community and personal point of view, right? And we can no longer look at something and assume that it is true. We need to get the whole story. We need to dive deeper today, especially with everything that goes on with social media, all of the uh, tricks and tips out there. I saw a Yesterday, I was blown away. I saw a Top Gun, um, like original Top Gun. I saw a Top Gun um, trailer that had my friend's face in it in the, in, in, instead of Tom Cruise's. And I was like, what in the world? And sure enough, it's this app that you can download and you put your face in there and it replaces your face with the face of whoever is on the screen. So really cool, really fun, but also kind of scary, right? You never know what you're looking at anymore. So dive in, have that critical thinking, have those discussions, right? We are the architects building their and our future. And when we don't pile everything on, when we don't sit down with catastrophe and waffles, right? When we don't pile everything on, the overwhelm fades a little bit and we can actually focus on what we can make a difference in. So happy day, you guys. Yes, and you can absolutely still have a happy day, even with the heaviness and problems in this world. And it's even probable for you to have a happy day. You just need to choose it. So happy day, happy building. And I will talk to you all very soon. Okay, bye-bye.